What are the best and worst Bitcoin ETFs so that you can put your assets if you want to buy fake ETF Bitcoin, right? I love Bitcoin in an ETF. It's super easy. So if you want to buy Bitcoin in an ETF, what ETF do you want to go with? I'm going to rank the best and worst ETFs in my opinion based on a couple factors like assets under management, fees, uh, the brand of the ETF, right? All these are very important. And then who's custodying the Bitcoin for the ETF? So there's a lot of things that go into an ETF to make it a good ETF. So we're going to rank every ETF. We have 10 here all spot Bitcoin ETFs, um, no futures. I only do spot. So what spot ETF is going to be best? Which one's going to be S tier and which one's going to be worst down in the D tier? In order to be a D tier, you have to be a pretty bad ETF, overly high fees, terrible volume, terrible liquidity, and terrible brand name in order to be S tier. Basically, be all the opposite of that. Have great fees, great liquidity, great brand name, you know, something that people can trust to do well with their Bitcoin and make a lot of money from. All right. So if you're going to buy a Bitcoin ETF, here's how I'd rank them. I have a, I have a ton of the Bitcoin ETF, probably like 158 shares at the end. I'll tell you which ETF I'm actually in, but I have probably like eight, almost $9,000 in the ETF after this recent pump. So I'm pretty happy with that, but Let's start this out with a good one. Let's start this out with the iShares Bitcoin Trust down here. And this is actually going to be BlackRock's Bitcoin ETF. Now, there's a couple of great things about BlackRock. One, it is a massive asset manager in the trillions of dollars. I think it's like nine or ten trillion dollars in total assets under management. But then in their Bitcoin ETF, they are... I think they are the largest Bitcoin ETF out there. They do some of the largest daily volume and they have some of the largest assets under management. Their current Bitcoin fee is right here, 0.25%, which is a good fee. You see some are going to be a little bit lower, right? But for what BlackRock is giving you in their ETF with their brand name, a 0.25% fee is still a low fee and still something very reasonable for a long-term investment. We can also see up here, BlackRock is this top row. Assets under management, when you filter it from top to bottom, they are number one and they have an amazing volume. I'd say the one thing that keeps this out of the S tier for me is that they use Coinbase as a custodian. As someone who's more into crypto, I'd like to see BlackRock take their crypto into their own hand, do some more higher level asset management with like some hard wallets, some hot wallets, some Coinbase, you know, some different options and different opportunities to keep their Bitcoin safe or keep, you know, them in control of their own Bitcoin. So BlackRock, dominant dominant company dominant dominant asset manager and dominant um bitcoin etf this is definitely a tier on the total polar opposite let's go with something much smaller like the franklin templeton digital holdings trust this is not a brand i've ever heard of until recording this video and doing a little bit of research on it um they do have obviously a lot of assets under management to be in charge of a Bitcoin ETF. But when I hear of large asset managers, I've never heard of Franklin Templeton. So I don't really know everything off the top of my head, but let's take a look at what they're offering. Currently, they have a fee of 0.19%, which is better than BlackRock's fee. Franklin Templeton to just buy Bitcoin for you in an after-tax brokerage account or in a pre-tax brokerage account has a lower fee than BlackRock. So if you're only looking at fees, this might be a better option for you. But when we scroll down here, they're right here, Easy Bitcoin, Franklin Templeton, their assets under management is only 312 million and they do about $5 million in liquidity on a daily basis or today at least. And they're, they're also custodied on Coinbase. When we compare that to BlackRock, their 24 hour volume is 425 million. BlackRock's 24 hour volume is bigger than Franklin Templeton's Bitcoin assets under management. So to me, this is kind of like why I understand the fee. You have a little bit of a fee help with 0.19 versus a 0.25 fee. But for me, in this scenario, the brand name of Franklin Templeton versus the brand name of BlackRock, I don't see a major comparison there. I would much rather put my money in a larger, bigger asset manager that has a much harder time failing. I also think that a gap of 0.19 to 0.25 so a 0.06 percent fee difference is not worth me risking it with a smaller asset manager versus a larger asset manager i know that they're just both buying bitcoin on coinbase but to each their own so for me franklin templeton is not bad it's just not good enough to make it into a b or an a or an s tier I'm going to drop it at a C tier because it has a good fee. It's just a smaller asset manager, something I don't really want to risk on. In line with Franklin Templeton, I also want to cover Wisdom Tree and Invesco at the same exact time. So let's look at them real quick. Wisdom Tree 
is going to have a 0.25% fee. So the exact same as BlackRock and Invesco is going to have a 0.25% fee. So exact same as BlackRock again. Are these going to be better brands, larger ETFs, bigger volumes in liquidity that make it worth having them over BlackRock? That's something that we must ask. So let's go look at Invesco and Wisdom Tree. Here we can see Wisdom Tree's spot Bitcoin ETF currently has 79 million assets under management and does a million volume a day, also custodied on Coinbase. We can see Invesco right here, 383 million assets under management, no volume data for some reason, also custodied on Coinbase. So when we're looking at things like this, I think while Franklin Templeton has a little bit better fee, Invesco and Wisdom Tree are much in line with what Franklin Templeton is doing, in my opinion, as a, just an average retail investor who wants Bitcoin in a brokerage account, right? Why would I go with Invesco? Why would I go with Wisdom Tree when BlackRock is arguably a much larger brand, a much larger ETF that's harder to fail, a much larger asset manager that has a lot more moving strings and a lot more parts and a lot more ability in the marketplace. So the brand name is part of what you're buying with an ETF because a Fidelity ETF can go up with the price of Bitcoin, but BlackRock or Invesco or any other ETF could have negative news just about the company, the asset manager themselves, and their ETF will go down away from Bitcoin's price. So you're buying into a brand and you need to make sure the brand is something that you can be okay with. The fee for being smaller brands with less volume and less assets under management, they need to provide a better, a better fee than something like BlackRock does. So for me, Invesco, D tier, and Wisdom Tree is going to be D tier. They'd be in C tier if Franklin didn't have a better fee than them, but Franklin does have a better fee. So for these three smaller asset managers, it would be better worth your time to just go with Franklin because it's a lower fee. The Valkyrie Bitcoin Fund is also similar to these three ETFs in the fact that it's a little bit of a smaller ETF. It has a 0.25% fee, just like BlackRock. It's kind of like this standard. It's like BlackRock or somebody set the standard at 0.25 and then you can see on this list there are so many 0.25s, right? And so you got to ask yourself what makes these ETFs better than each other at 0.25% fee? Really, some people are just only offered certain things in different retirement accounts. So that's just, they got to go with what they got. Um, but Valkyrie, we can see here, 500 million assets under management. So a little bit higher than the other three ETFs we've looked at on the lower end, doing about 2 million a day in, in volume today at least and still Custodied on Coinbase. You know, as a somebody who's more into crypto, the whole custody on Coinbase thing, I get it, but it just seems like a risk. I'm going to put Valkyrie as a C tier as well because it's got good assets under management, 500 million in the Bitcoin ETF. It's, it is a brand that I've heard of before, whereas these other three I have not heard of before this video. And so there's a little bit more confidence there for me. There's a little bit more things, but the fee, I would like to see the fee a little bit lower for being a lower assets under management is something like BlackRock. We're going to get back into the bigger players here. ARK Invest is another one of those brand name ETFs with Kathy Wood. She's all on the news doing interviews, making bold things about Tesla and Bitcoin predictions. ARK is somebody that is, again, we're getting back into the name, name branded companies, asset managers and ETFs. They're a big proponent of the crypto industry and a lot of, a lot of big tech like AI and stuff like that. Some people don't like Kathy Wood. Some people don't like the way that ARK invests into like these new AI models or robotic models or machine learning models. Um, but let's look at their, their ETF. They are rocking a 0.21% fee, which is what I've been saying. If you are somebody like BlackRock on BlackRock's level, you can have the same fee as them, do the same things, right? But ARK is putting their fee strategically lower than BlackRock because they know that they're not big enough, but they still have that brand name that ARK and Kathy would have. So I like to see ARK, 0.21% fee. That's a great fee for them. Lower than BlackRock, lower than Fidelity. And you'll see that they do have right here, ARK, a little bit lower assets under management. They still have 3 billion assets under management in Bitcoin and 40 million daily volume in the Bitcoin ETF. They're also custodied on Coinbase. I'd like to see them do a little bit of self-custody or a little bit of hot wallet, hard wallet combination. But because they have a lower fee, because they are a good brand name and because Kathy is known in the industry, definitely a good B tier Bitcoin ETF to be invested in if you are looking for one outside of like BlackRock or outside of Fidelity or outside of Grayscale, right? ARK does have a good thing. They have a good company and a good asset manager. That's name brand and well-known, which are things. Now, the thing about uh, ARK is that 
Some people have a bad perception of them. So you want to make sure that if you're investing in them, you have an, an understanding of where that market sentiment around their brand is. Because again, their ETF can underperform simply based on brand name. Vanek is an interesting one because they are the only Bitcoin ETF that is with Gemini. And I want to give them props for being custodied with Gemini. Let's see here. Van Eck is right here. Spot Bitcoin ETF has 529 million assets under management in the Bitcoin ETF and about 9 million daily volume today. But they're going to be the only one that is custodied with Gemini. And I want to applaud them for this because they went out of their comfort zone of just being with Coinbase like every other Bitcoin ETF. So Van Eck, the HODL Bitcoin ETF definitely should get some props and will come up the scale because they've chosen to do their own thing. Now, compared to Kathy Wood's ARC, they do have a lot less assets under management. Let's see what their fee is. Their fee currently is 0.20%, so just a little bit below Kathy Wood's ARC, and I really like that. They know that they're a smaller asset manager. They're positioning themselves just below Kathy, just below BlackRock to give more competitive advantage, even though they have less in their assets under management. And they're, the, Vanek is a well-known brand in asset management somebody i've heard of before just the bitcoin etfs because of this because they're with gemini i like all these things they're going to definitely be a b tier bitcoin etf for me down to the last three the last three i want to go in the order of bitwise grayscale fidelity okay bitwise is known well within the crypto industry they do a lot of crypto assets under management they're more specific to crypto i think in my opinion um but their current fee is 0.20 right there with Van Eck, good competitive ETF fee. And then they are currently a $2 billion assets under management, 35 million of volume, and they're custodied on Coinbase. So Bitwise, another brand I've heard of, really popular in like crypto, really popular asset manager, someone that has a good social media presence on like Twitter and stuff. So they're just a run of the mill B tier for me, a good ETF if they're available in your after-tax or pre-tax brokerage. You might want to consider them. Bitwise is good. Grayscale is very controversial. They have a very incredibly high fee, which to me is just absurd. In all the ETF games, there's always that one company that has a much higher fee than everyone else. I don't know if it's because it's just they just want to have it higher or why. Grayscale was the first kind of into that Bitcoin ETF market with the G Bitcoin account. And so that conversion has been a little controversial, a little weird to navigate. Um, but Grayscale Bitcoin Trust is going to rank a little bit lower. I think I'm going to rank it C tier because of its just massive fee. Let's see if we have it on here. Grayscale currently has a 1.5% fee, which if you do the math on a fee that big, um, over the lifespan of like 20 or 30 or 40 years, they're taking hundreds of thousands of dollars in gains away from you on something like an S&P 500 ETF. So when you translate it to a Bitcoin ETF, you could be out 30, 25, 30, 40% of your uh, profits because of that fee over the lifetime of your investment. So a big fee like that is not really something super great. Obviously, they have a massive assets under management with 14 billion in the Bitcoin ETF and 70 million daily volume, but they're still custodied on Coinbase, not really doing anything different and making it a lot harder for people to invest in. This is going to be C tier for me just because why would you want to pay the fee when all of the other assets, all the other asset managers and all the other Bitcoin ETFs are giving you literally the exact same thing? Lastly, if you've watched my channel, this is my favorite ETF of all time, the Fidelity Wise Origin Bitcoin Fund, and it's going to be S tier. The Fidelity Bitcoin ETF is my favorite of all the ETFs for a few reasons. One, it competes with BlackRock on the name brand recognition of what the ETF is. Fidelity is one of the best known asset managers out there, right next to BlackRock, right next to Vanguard, right next to all these massive old giant companies that have pioneered the S&P 500 ETF space and now are pioneering the crypto ETF space with the Bitcoin ETF. So Fidelity has that going for it. It's competitive with BlackRock on a name brand basis, but it's also competitive on BlackRock in a fee basis. So BlackRock 0.25, Fidelity 0.25. Here's the kicker though. The best thing about the Big, uh, Fidelity Bitcoin ETF, one, 9 billion assets under management. That's a great number. Third largest ETF by assets under management, 124 million volume today, larger than Grayscale's volume today, which is massive and awesome and impressive. Fidelity is the second best compared to 
BlackRock on volume per day. And then lastly, Fidelity has that beautiful self-custody badge. They're the only ETF to do a little bit of self-custody, or actually they do full self-custody with a little bit of hot wallet and a little bit of cold wallet combined together. So a great control of assets, a great management of assets. And to me, it shows Fidelity's um, commitment to the crypto space. A lot of us have hardware wallets and hot wallets, and we do all this crazy stuff to get the Bitcoin that we own or crypto that we own in and out of exchanges and moving from place to place and having an asset manager like Fidelity that understands that, that does that and agrees with that to me is you can't put a price on that. Instead of just putting their money on Coinbase, they're controlling their money, putting it on hot wallets, putting it on cold wallets and taking care of their own crypto. So our S tier Bitcoin ETF is going to be Fidelity. To me, it's the best. There's a lot of good options here. BlackRock, ARK, VanEck, Bitwise, all great options to me. Really down here in the D tier, Invesco, Wisdom Tree, and probably even Franklin. They just don't have a good combination of enough brand recognition and low enough fees to compete with the big dogs up here. When you get an option to invest in Fidelity or iShares or ARK or VanEck, why would you go with something like Wisdom Tree, Invesco, or Franklin, right? So that's how I'm ranking the ETFs. Definitely think Fidelity is the best. BlackRock is a close second. Let me know in the comments down below what you think is the best Bitcoin ETF. Is it Fidelity? Is it BlackRock? Which one are you invested in and why? I think over the next 6, 12 months, we're going to see some awesome returns on these Bitcoin ETF investments. And I've definitely doubled my position in September to be prepared for next year. That's my Bitcoin ETF ranking best to worst. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you in the next one.